Hi, have you ever wondered about spiritual direction? Are you wondering if you should get a spiritual director? Are you wondering what people talk about at a spiritual director meeting? If you're wondering anything about spiritual direction, stick around. We're going to answer lots of questions and hopefully help you decide if you need spiritual direction or maybe even if you should become a spiritual director. Hi, Deanna. Thank you for joining us today. Deanna is a spiritual Hi, director. Hi, Amy. It's good to be here. Yeah. So, Deanna, can you introduce yourself to everyone? Sure, sure. So, Deanna Bartolini. I am a spiritual director. I'm an author. I'm a speaker and a content creator. I am the founder of the website called LiveNotLukewarm.com, which has Bible studies on it and book clubs and opportunities to have virtual interaction, but together in in a live, uh, like, you know, in a, in a Zoom call or something like that. So that's what I do. And I also work a little bit in social media for, for uh, women in the new evangelization, wine, and I work uh, for Catholic Mom and do some writing for them as well. Wow, you do a lot. A <laughs> so on better. top of all that, you recently <laughs> became a spiritual director. Yes. Okay, so can you tell us what is spiritual direction? So spiritual direction is an opportunity for a person to go to a particular person, a spiritual director, and focus on their relationship with God and how it impacts our life. Because, you know, we don't just have a relationship with us and God. It impacts everything that we do in our daily life and with everyone else that we're involved with. So spiritual direction is an opportunity to really focus on ourselves and the intersection of life and faith. Okay, so how did you first learn about spiritual direction? So many years ago, actually in, I think it was 1998, that's how many years ago it was. <laughs> um, I was working as a youth minister and there was a priest, not in our parish, but in, in the diocese. He said to me, he said, you know, you have a lot going on. You know, I had, I had a family. I mean, I still have a family, but I had a family. I was a wife. I was working full time as youth minister. And he said, it might be good for you to focus on your own spiritual life because we all know the adage, you can't, you can't give what you don't have, right? So he says to me, why don't you come for spiritual direction? And I thought, okay. I had no idea what he was talking about. <laughs> But I agreed because I trusted him. <laughs> so, and that's how I started. And so, you know, I learned that taking that time to reflect and consider where God and the Holy Spirit is moving in your life is very, very important. So who should seek a spiritual director? And I'm sorry, if you're watching live, feel free to comment. Tell us your name because of the software. It won't tell us your Facebook name, um, tell us where you're calling from and where you're calling from, where you're asking a question from and uh, feel free to ask any question you have. So who, who do you think should seek out spiritual direction? If you feel like you would to have, have a deeper relationship with God, a better understanding of your spiritual life, that's a, that's a person who would be interested in starting spiritual direction. We often think about going to spiritual direction when you have big decisions to make. Should I, should I marry this man? Should I become a nun? Or in the case of men, should I become a priest? What's my vocation? Should I move to California? You know, if I live in New York, those like really big questions, right? And it's very helpful to go for spiritual direction for those types of questions. But it can also be my prayer life just seems really flat. I don't ever know what God is telling me to do. You know, so that sense of, am I really going in the right direction? Am I really focused on where I'm supposed to be focused? That, so in your ordinary life, it's not, I think there used to be this idea that if you went to spiritual direction, it was because you were super holy. Okay. In 1999, when I was going to spiritual direction, I was not super holy. I'm not super holy now either, but I know I was not super holy then. Um, I had teenage children and I was a youth minister. So sometimes that's overwhelming. Mm -hmm. So it's just a sense of, 
am I in the right place? And I think people have those questions all the time, not just when they're looking at big major life decisions. Do you think, and this is kind of off the cuff, more Catholics should seek out the spiritual director? I look at it this way. We ask people to help us, you know, to eat better, to work out better at the gym. We have life coaches. We have, I mean, there are coaches now for, for everything, right? So why not have someone who you check in with for your spiritual life? Yeah. So say someone does want to find a spiritual director. How? How? <laughs> How does someone go wow. about doing that? Where are they? Are they hiding somewhere? Is this a secret? Yeah. Uh, do I need a code? No. <laughs> the, a good place to start is to ask in your parish if you're, if any of the priests know anyone who is a spiritual director. The other place is, depending on where you live, again, if you live near a retreat house or where there are um, some Sometimes we'll call it like a house of prayer, or if you there's a, a convent or a friary, a rectory, where they have order priests as opposed to diocesan priests. So priests and sisters who belong to a specific uh, religious order. They often offer spiritual direction, but retreat houses are a really good place because retreat centers, typically the people there often are familiar with spiritual direction and have training in spiritual direction. So those are good places to start. And those of course would offer you face-to-face -face opportunities. The other place, um, there's a new website, it's called seekdirection.app, okay? Seekdirection.app. And that's actually a website where you can go. And there are other websites, but that one is new and I can say, that it is definitely Catholic. Um, there are other sites that have Christian spiritual directors and other denominations, and that's fine. They're, I mean, that's a good thing, um, but I don't wanna promote something as being Catholic unless I'm 100% certain it is, and I know that this one is. Uh, and so that's another way. Um, and ask your friends, ask people well, you know. Uh, it's good that you say that though. Like I'm in a, a Bible study at my parish and th this came up about spiritual direction. And we meant to ask our priest. We have one priest. It's a huge parish, you know, but we forgot the time he came. So, um, you know, none of my friends know. <laughs> well, so, yeah, I mean, it just, it just depends. But I think the, and then also if there are, so people who become spiritual directors, they tend to, you can either go and get like a master's degree in spiritual direction, or you can have a certificate program. And so if you live near a Catholic college or university, you could check if they have a spiritual direction program, and then they might allow, like they might then keep a list of their graduates, and that might also be another. I know that the school that I went to does that. Um, wow, you can get your master's degree in spiritual direction? You can, you, wow. you can. I, I don't um, because when I decided to become a spiritual director, uh, I already had two master's degrees and I thought I like a third, ma that seems very, I am, I, uh, it seems excessive. I thought at that point, that's enough. Just stop. So it you now. did like a search. You have, a I, right. It was a certificate cert certification program um, outside uh, in St. Petersburg, Tampa, St. Petersburg diocese in Florida. And it's, uh, it's called the Seneca school of Marian servants of divine providence and it's in affiliation with Franciscan University uh, in Steubenville. But don't call them this week because they're having a hurricane. <laughs> okay. Don't call. So you mentioned seekdirection.app. Are you listed on that? I am. I am. Okay. Yeah. So can people use that to find someone local or is that all just like a Yes. When, when you go into it, it asks you whether you're looking for someone in person or whether you're open to virtual. And so you you know you set in your parameters and as much as little information that you want to give, and then they'll you know find you directors that fit those parameters, and then you contact them. Great, we'll share that link. Definitely. Yeah. So if you're watching live or later, you can ask a question at any time. We'll do our best to answer it as quickly as possible. But here's a question I have. Yes. Does a spiritual director charge for his or her services? So that varies. 
totally varies. You know, it's not like if you say to someone, does the doctor charge? Pretty much everyone's going to say yes to doctor charges, um, the counselor charges. Um, some do and some don't. Some, if especially like at a retreat house, um, often they'll just ask for a donation. Uh, so it just, it just totally depends. And I think that when you first talk to a spiritual director, ask the question and people, I know that's a hard question. Are you going, is there a charge? And actually, honestly, if you go on some people's websites, they tell you right there what that, what their fee is. Um, and some just ask for a donation and some take nothing. And it just, it's all over the place. Okay. So, so does your website have your spiritual direction um, highlighted where somebody could just go to your website and say, you know, I think Deanna would be a great spiritual doctor for me. Yes. Um, so it's, it's live not lukewarm.com. And then there's a tab for spiritual direction. And on there, it just explains some different things. Really this conversation that we're having, it's there in print. Okay. Um, yeah. And to say, okay, so what am I going to do? Like, what is the purpose? What does someone do in spiritual direction? The, the other thing I, I want to say, because I, I know this is one of the questions that we talked about. So spiritual director has an implication that you're going to come to me and you're going to say, Diana, I'm confused about this, this, and this. Tell me what to do. Well, I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm not. And, you know, as I said, I, I used to be a youth minister, so I am very good at telling people what to do, but I don't do that in spiritual direction. It's not my job. Okay. Um, the, so what are the some things you say? Are you allowed to tell us? Like, what are some things you hypothetically would say to someone who's sitting there saying, I need help? I, um, I don't know if I should marry this guy or keep dating this guy, or I don't know if I should take this job, or I feel like my my job that I have now is not leading me to live a life of virtue. Like what are some things that you say? Well, I think first of all, it depends like on how long you've known the person. So that's one thing to consider. The other is that the type of spiritual direction that I was trained in and that I use with people up to this point is always based in scripture. And so we start with God's word and the directee, which is the person coming they have a prayer life. When they come, they talk about their prayer life. They talk about where they see God moving. And so what, what the director does is listen and reflect back. And also what I, what I find both as a, as a directee and as a director is, it, is to help make people make connections. Like my director helps me all the time make connections. So like I'm saying something and then five minutes later I say something else and she says, well, you just said this and you just said this and how do you think they go together? Right. Um, that's the most, that's, that's like about the most directive I get. <laughs> how do you think those, you know, what do you think God is saying? Where do you think the spirit is moving you? Um, and I don't mean to sound as if it's all just uh, like wishy-washy. It's not. It's oftentimes in the world that we live in, how many people say that someone actually listens to them without judgment, without wanting to tell them what to do next, or without telling them how that happened to me and this is what I did. So if someone comes and says, okay, I don't know whether to take this job or not. Well, the first, probably the first question I would ask is, okay, have you asked Jesus about this? You know, have you talked to God? because that has to come first. And they, and they say, I did, but I can't hear them. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then, so then there's some sense of that you help a person with their prayer. Okay. Right. Yeah. You, you say, okay, have you considered this way to pray or this way to pray? And Nine times out of 10, maybe nine and a half times out of 10, the reason why we don't hear God is because we don't ever stop talking. Amen. We, we just, we just don't. Um, the other thing is, you know, in scripture, when, when God reveals himself, it's really big, isn't it? It's huge. Like the angel comes to Mary in her room. You know, Joseph has dreams. 
Moses gets a burning bush and then the Israelites get a, a pillar of fire and, and a cloud. And I, and then we're like, okay, God, I want this. <laughs> and he's like, no, you need to pay attention and you need to listen better and you need to still yourself. Yeah. Right. And then you're going to hear what he has to say. And also I have found in my own life that if I'm, if I have a particular situation that I'm really trying to pray through, I don't necessarily get the answer during prayer time. I get it in the shower when I'm cooking dinner, right. when I'm driving and my mind is just kind of wandering. Uh, and then all of a sudden there's like this like little thought that goes through my head. And it's like, where did that come from? Oh, oh wait. So prayer teaches us, I think, to be more open and receptive. So if we don't get a burning bush, we're okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you find this, Deanna, but I find that God speaks in very short phrases, not something long. It's like usually about like, I will provide or trust me or, or something very short. Um, how do you know what scripture to pick? Do you, like, is that something you learned in spiritual direction school? Like start your thing with this gospel or... <laughs> Um, partly. So there are actually lots of books and resources that, that, you know, we have at our, dis at our disposal to use for this. But let's say a person is, they come and they say, okay, I really need to work on my level of patience. And so then you would pray with scriptures related to patience. Or, you know, if someone is looking at their vocation, uh, okay, so then it's those are the things, the, the readings from the gospel where Jesus is calling the apostles or the readings where, you know, is this my path in life? Well, then maybe then we focus on readings from scripture that talk about picking up our cross and or we look at stories from the Old Testament, you know, the scripture where, where God is calling Elijah or any of those, you know, Joseph, how did Joseph know his vocation? That's, that's like some story there, right? Um, you know, like now we're going through Job in the daily mass readings, right? We just started the book of Job. So if someone is struggling with suffering, um, then maybe reflecting on on Job. So it just depends on, it depends on the topic. And then no, you choose total it. sense. Yeah. So those of you watching, again, whether it's live or not, you can type a question in the comments because I only have one more question. And that is, if someone wants to become a spiritual director, what advice do you have for him or her? Well, so first, you need to pray about it, probably with a spiritual director. <laughs> um, and then, so the method of spiritual direction that I was trained in and drawn to, not, and I was drawn to it, and that's why I was trained in it, right, is Ignatian. So it's foundation of St. Ignatius Loyola, his teachings, and he has something called the spiritual exercises. And I don't know if all programs require this, but our program did that we go through the spiritual exercises um, so that we know about them and so we know ourselves. Because in the spiritual exercises, you really learn about surrender, detachment, that we really are meant to be here on this earth, to be at the service of God and each other. And so one way then I, I would suggest is to even to do the spiritual exercises with someone and then go through the spiritual exercises and then look around. Do you want to get a degree? Do you want to get a certificate? There are all sorts of programs. There are virtual programs. There are in-person programs. There are combination programs. So you can just Google Catholic spiritual direction. I mean, I know, so I live in Florida and there are three, if not four schools that offer spiritual direction. And I chose the one I chose because it was based Ignatian um, and it was relatively easy for me to get to and it was in person. Well, until That's fascinating because I did not even realize there were different types. Yes. And then someone did comment, Deanna, I love that so much. 
go to the program you were drawn to. And she said, thank you so much for this interview. You're welcome. Yeah. Yeah. Ignatius is a very practical saint. You know, he, he, I mean, if you think about it, his teachings, his spiritual exercises have withstood the test of time over, you know, 500 years. Um, I think we can say they're solid. <laughs> so That's awesome. Deanna, thank you so much. This was so helpful. So helpful. I'm so very glad. It, yeah. Thank you. And I am going to make sure I drop uh, the Seek Direction app link, as well as Live Not Lukewarm link so that you can learn more about spiritual direction and find a spiritual director. And if you like this, make sure you stick around, hit subscribe, subscribe to catholicsonline.net so we can stay connected and have more informational interviews and more like this. So have a great day, everyone, and God bless you. Bye-bye. Bye, Deanna. Thank you again. Bye, Amy. Thank you.